Welcome to our fourth day of the 20 community classes of the 20 offerings that I'm uh, teaching as a part of my training, my 500 hour yoga certification. I've been teaching for a long time now and this uh, was really the next step for me to get the next level certification and just to, just to hone in a little bit more on the really details um, and the, the theory and everything holistically related to yoga. My name is Neil or Nilofer, the full name. And I teach usually at River City Pilates through Zoom right now, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you're a total beginner, this class is great because I pick and choose a little bit of everything to introduce you to. If you are an advanced yogi, meaning you have been practicing for some time, I'm not saying advanced yogi as in doing some really, um, for me, weird stuff like the leg behind your head that's I can't do that I don't want to go there not at my age I'm not a 20 year old as you can see so um please advanced yogi doesn't mean any type of advanced asanas postures advanced yogi means you are in tune with your body and your breath that's where I wanted to take this um have you had a chance to google the Tibetan rites or have you had a chance really to hone in in your body? We have done three days of Tibetan rites to warm up, to understand what it does in the energy wise to you, because it's all about the chakras. Chakras, hmm, what does that mean? Energy centers in the body. So we have several stages of energy centers in the body, starting in the pelvic floor and then here in the navel area, to the heart area, to the throat, and then up in the head area. So these are the energy levels that the Tibetan rites really work with. But on top of it, it's wonderful to work the neck, the lower back, and the thoracic spine, because that's really important. So without further ado, we're starting with another Kriya exercise. Kriya, meaning cleansing in Sanskrit. We have done this, Sata Nama, you remember, that's a cleansing exercise. And now we're going to do the Kapalabhati breath, Kapalabhati breath. So what does that mean? If for any reason you're clogged up in the nose area today, skip this one. You can do it next time. But if you're okay, sit however you like. You know by now my favorite seated position is the one that I sit on my heels. And it could be on a cushion. So my the tops of my feet are on a cushion. I like that version the best. It protects, it cushions the, uh, the tops of my feet. And if you don't like this, sit any way you like. It's not important. And I want you to stay, stay upright. Let me go from this side. Let me, my screen went black for a second. So let me go from the side. Sit upright, not a cat pose, not a, not a cow pose, upright. Put one hand onto your belly because this movement is gonna come from the belly. How? With a forced exhale through the nose. If there is a passive inhale through the mouth and a forced exhale through the mouth. Don't, don't focus on the inhale, just focus on the exhale through the mouth. So as you're doing this, your belly goes in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. So let's put this to test just for a little while because we're gonna do three rounds of 10 movements back and forth. So this is just a trial run. So take a big inhale, seal the lips just through the nose. Exhale, 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 pump your stomach. Exhale, exhale, exhale. That's how it needs to feel. So I'll go sideways so you can see it maybe a little bit differently. So here we go. We're going to do three rounds. Each time we're pumping 10 times the belly. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Inhale deeply. Start. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. 
and relax your hand down, close your eyes, or if you have them closed, keep them there. Just notice, just notice what it does. Continue breathing normally or use a tissue if you needed to. I should have mentioned that at the beginning of the practice. <laughs> All right. Just catch your breath. Let's think about an intention again for a class while we're sitting here to keep the mind busy with yogic stuff this morning or this afternoon or this evening for you. An intention that you are going to just hone in on your breath and your body, the movements, and that we are grateful, we're healthy, and we can do this together. Or you might want to dedicate this practice to something, somebody, to yourself. Couple more breaths here. And then come slowly out of it by maybe coming off of your heels and maybe giving them a little TLC. If you weren't doing this, then you have given your ankle stump TLC the whole time. So we're coming up to our Tibetan right. Um, right, I should say, because it's plural. We have done so far nine of them each time we have been doing this class. Now we're gonna go up to 11. If you have never done the Tibetan rites, please go, my, go back to my first class. It's free, it's on River City Pilates Studios uh, YouTube channel, and you can do it in um, uh, one at a time. So without further ado, come up again, maybe making a fist. That's my, per my favorite way of coming up because you're putting your weight on and this is bone tempering and the knees up, and then maybe hands up your legs and you know what to do. Windshield, no, not windshield wiper. Yeah, it's sort of a windshield wiper with your arms, but the medical Qigong, that's it. Move from the ankles, move the knees, move the hips, move the shoulders, yes. And I have my cushions in the middle of my mat. I'm gonna push this to the side. By the way, I of course didn't mention this, but grab two blocks and have them in the vicinity. We don't need them for the Tibetan rites, but later on we will need them. So when you're ready, we're gonna do 11. If you have been doing the Tibetan rites, you know what to do. I don't have you walk you through it. Start to do as many as you like, but if you're doing it with me for the last three days, today is 11. So arms out wide, look at your feet hips this or shoulder distance rather, have a good secure base here. Feel your feet, feel your legs. Your arms can be of course this way or maybe even closer, but these are the levers really. It, it helps us spin clockwise, start spinning clockwise. You can always do overhead too, whatever feels good. But I want you to stop the moment you feel dizzy or nauseated because that's already a sign that you had enough. And it's not about fast spin, it's about deliberate, feeling your feet on the ground every time. And like the dancers do, hit the same spot on the wall every time you do a full round. And that helps them, but it didn't really help me at the beginning of my Tibetan rites uh, practice. I've been doing this for four months now and finally, I can spin without really feeling nauseous or dizzy. I have two more left. I'm doing this very slowly. I'm going into my last one. And I'm going to stay till I recover completely, maybe hands to your hips and just recover. Come back to your breath, especially if you're holding your breath. Notice how it makes you feel. The energy centers in the body, right? Yes. All right. We have one more standing pose. That is a back bend in a thoracic spine opener. So widen your stance. It needs to be comfortable. For me, a comfortable stance is feet as wide as my mat and parallel feet. I'm pressing into my feet. I'm engaging my quads. That's my lower half of the body. Now, 
to the second half, I'm gonna put my hands, fingertips down to my lower back. I gave you the option yesterday of maybe fingertips up, even if the palms of your hands don't reach your lower back. This is a great knuckle stretch, wrist stretch. If this hurts too much, flip it. Maybe some of you like to do this one, grab the hamstrings. And this is from the front like this. So I'm gonna grab actually the hamstrings just to show you it's a great way to do this too. But if you rather have your hands at your lower back, that's the best protective way. So hand, hands down at your hamstrings, hands, fingertips down or fingertips up, squeeze your shoulder blades because we want the chest up. Watch my chest, chest up, not the shoulders up, chest up, chest up, that's it right chest up keep this chest up thing throughout the 11 if you want to do the whole or as many as you want to do so push your hands into your hamstrings or your lower back push your hips forward chest up chest up now check in with the neck can you go all the way up with the nose and look back if this feels right you're in your first one exhale come back to your neutral spine inhale second time push your hips forward chest is up you didn't change the chest. Okay, squeeze your shoulder blades. Exhale, come back. By now, you know now if the neck likes it. You can always keep the chin to your chest as you're going into your third one. Inhale. Exhale, come back. Inhale, four. You decide on the neck. Exhale, come back. Inhale, five. Exhale, come back. Inhale, six. Exhale, come back. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Inhale, seven. Exhale, come back. Inhale, eight. Exhale, come back. Inhale, nine. Exhale, come back. We're going to 11. Inhale, 10. Exhale, come back. Inhale, 11. Last one. Exhale, come back. And you know what to do. Bring your feet a little closer and go into your medical Qigong. Perfect. Now, we are going to move down onto the floor. Come down the way you you would you did come up. So onto your fist and maybe onto the knees. And then come all the way to a seated position. And then come all the way to your back. What are we doing? What's the third one? The third one is the J, the capital letter J that we're tracing. So I'm gonna actually use the cushion for my head. It feels really nice. So put your head on the cushion and I need to flip the camera so you can see me. Yeah. All right. All right, Isol, help me here. No? All right, a little bit further down. Okay. All right, so hands next to your hips. You have options. Going on. All right, are you there? Yeah. Hands next to your hips or underneath your hips. These are all options. Legs, well, right now, just straight down. I'm gonna show you the neck. So the part of J, the lower part, is chin to chest. Try a couple of times. If you don't like it, leave the head down on the cushion or on the floor. Now, the lower, uh, lower part is maybe do it with bent knees first. Bend your knees, bring them to tabletop, and then straight up. Maybe this is what you want to do today, and that's okay. And then exhale, bring them straight down. So you can bend the knees and straight up. You can not see the lower part of my legs straight up, flex your ankles, and then exhale, come back. If you can, with hands underneath your gluteal muscles or next to your hips, legs straight up, try that one. If that works, great. If it doesn't work, then you want to do the bend knees. All right, here we go. Ready? Inhale, engage the legs, flex your ankles, maybe chin to chest. 
Exhale, come back. Inhale, two. Exhale, come back. Inhale, three. Exhale, come back. Inhale, four. Exhale, back. My hands stay down. Inhale, five. Exhale, come back. Pull the belly in. Six. Exhale, back. Seven. Exhale, back. Eight. Exhale, back. Nine. Exhale, back. Inhale, 10. Exhale, back. Inhale, 11. Exhale, back. And relax, completely relax. Let the feet fall to the side. Relax your upper body, relax your lower body. Mini Shavasana, yes. One or two more breaths here. And then if you like, bend your knees and windshield wiper your knees from side to side as you're still in not moving your upper part of your body. Just bring some motion into the hips because we're coming to a seated position. So how? Roll to your side and come slowly up or you know the other deal, round. Round your upper back and rock as many times as you like and come to a seated position. Now I'm gonna flip the camera again so you can see this pose. This is our reverse tabletop. Oh, this is a little crooked here. What's going on with my easel this morning? All right. Legs engaged. How? By flexing your ankles. Feel your thighs. One part of the reverse tabletop is you're pressing your hands down, straightening the elbow, pushing the shoulders down, and you're in this upright spine. Now push your nose back and make a double chin. I know, I know, it doesn't look pretty, but no one is looking at you. You're not looking really at me. It's too far away for you to see how awful it looks. So this is your L shape, yes? If the fingers don't reach the floor, make come to a tripod, push the palms down, and then maybe you can straighten your hands. Sometimes our anatomy will not some people I have seen, they hover like this. So push the fingertips down and you can still sit in this upright position. This is our exhale. Now inhale, bend the knees, heels away from you. Hands, adjust your hands. Your body will tell you where to put your hands. Push up, 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 up. This is your inhale up to your reverse tabletop. Maybe if you have the room, again, look back. This is for the neck. And exhale, hips between your hands, come into this super straight, upright L shape. Push the nose back, double chin. Inhale, two. Exhale, hips between your hands, L sit. Inhale, three. Exhale, back. Inhale, four. Exhale back. Inhale five. Exhale back. Inhale six. Exhale back. Inhale seven. Exhale back. Inhale eight. Exhale back. Inhale, nine. Exhale, back. Inhale, 10. Exhale, back. Last time. Inhale, 11. Exhale, back. Nose back as you're doing the double chin. And then relax. Now you can slump. You can move legs, shoulders, anything, anything. Get the friction out of it. Get the tension out of it. And we're doing the last one, the double dog. So now the cushion comes back on top of my mat. And I'm gonna show you two versions of the double dog. One is with knees down and the other one is with knees up. So 
knees on the cushion, precious knees, protect them as much as you can, because at one point in our lives, we will all have issues with the knees. Spread your fingers, walk your hands forward. So you're in this diagonal type of tabletop, move your shoulders over your wrist. Look at the eyes of my elbows, they're forward. Now I'm turning them towards each other, lower the hips down, down, down. You can't see my head, but I'm looking up if this is okay with your neck. And then exhale, press into your hands, push the hips back, 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 back. Stay anywhere where you feel right for your knees or you go all the way to child's pose. Here we go again, two. Inhale, come forward, elbows towards each other. Maybe nose up or maybe straight look forward over your nose, straight down. And exhale, come back to half dog, child's pose, whatever you feel today in your body is right. Inhale, come forward again, turn the eyes of the elbows towards each other, maybe nose up. You keep your hands spread out, meaning the fingers, of course. And exhale, come back. Now I'm gonna show you with knees off the mat. Come forward, come forward, come forward. Same thing, turn the elbows towards each other. Curl your toes under, lift your knees. Nose up if you can. Exhale, maybe downward dog. Inhale, five. Exhale, go back. Inhale, six. Exhale, go back. You decide how you like it the best, knees down or knees up. Seven, exhale, go back. Eight, exhale, go back. Nine, exhale, go back. 10, exhale, go back. One more. Exhale, go back. Stay in downward dog as long as you like. Come bring your knees down. You have hopefully a cushion. Come into child's pose. Stick, get out of this pose if your knees are sensitive. So you can make it your own. I love the restorative uh, portion of this child's pose where I widen my knee as wide as my mat sometimes. And then you can pull the elbows in and maybe even... Do a little fist here for your forehead or next to each other. And you can move gently your forehead from side to side here, or you're already on the floor and you're doing this on your mat. It's a great forehead massage. So whatever works for you the best, that's what you need to do. Please don't think we all need to be in, in a child's pose and that's the most comfortable position. It's not, it's not if you have knee problems and you have to bend your knees in such an extreme way to get into child's pose. Some yogis have even their hips higher up. They can't go down further. It's not the knees, but they, it's just the tightness here, right? And the hamstrings and they can't go lower than let's say here. And that's okay. If it works out for you, it works out. If it doesn't come out of it. So really important that you listen to your body and that's the best way to practice yoga. Now, we are going to do some, uh, so yesterday I introduced you to sun salutations. So we're gonna do a little bit more of the vinyasa yoga. Vinyasa yoga is derived from a traditional lineage such as Ashtanga or Iyengar yoga. And people put this together, vinyasa meaning connecting poses with each other. So that's what we're going to do, connecting poses with each other. Not as strict and stringent as an Ashtanga or Iyengar version, but more in a fluid version. So bring the cushion back again for your knees. Since we're nice and warm here and lubricated and the chakras are doing their thing, our energy centers. So... We are going to stay in tabletop, take your blocks. If you don't have the blocks and you have no problems with your fingertips or with your palms on the floor, go ahead. So if you have the blocks, use them, why not? It brings the floor closer to you. Take your right 
foot and bring it forward. Yes, that's it. So let's do a little bit of an ankle thing here, going back and forth. Yeah. So I'm passing with my knee, my ankle way, way forward. And that's a good ankle stretch. And then go back and come forward, go back. Are you holding your breath? I hope not. I'm not cueing the breath right now. Two more times. This is great for the, well, the psoas muscle is the big muscle that connects our upper body to our lower body. Huge muscle. All right, here we go. Come forward with your toes. You need a little bit more room because we're gonna lift the back knee. So walk with your blocks a little bit more forward or if you're on the fingertips or foot, you can do that too. So I'll show you both ways. So imagine I'm holding the blocks here, press into your blocks and lift the back knee. That's it. Nice. Stay in this runner's lunge just a little bit longer. Inhale, exhale, big breath in, big breath out. I'm going to move backwards. You stay there so you can see me better. One more. If you have the block, Take the left side block, put the left hand on it and go to a twist. Maybe your right hand is at your uh, knee area or thigh rather, and look up towards the sky. For some of you reaching up with your right arm overhead to a high five is probably doable too. Without the block, hand down, that's good. One more breath. Bring now both hands down onto the blocks or onto the floor. Step into your right foot. Lift the back foot, lift the back foot, lift the back foot. Yes, yes, yes. Drop the left hip down. You can do this. Yes, this pose without the hands on the floor, it mimics already warrior three. And then step down, both feet together and fold. Look how much I'm bending my knees. Bend your knees, bend your knees. So you can hold on to the blocks. You can be on the floor and maybe your hips go from side to side. Just play with it a little bit. Let go of the neck, nice. One more breath. We're coming up. Walk your hands up, 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 up your legs. I'm gonna go backwards, you stay there so you can see me. Come up, go into your medical Qigong. Yes, nice. For those of you who don't need to look at the camera because you're getting used to my cues, you really don't need to look at the camera. So I'm going to cue this from, you're in the front of your mat and I'm on the back of your mat, okay? Of my mat, so you can see me. Inhale, arms up. Remember from yesterday, this is your mountain pose. Look up. I know you can't see my upper a part of my body, but I'm going to exhale and come down. You're at the top of your mat, so stay there. I'm coming forward. Grab your blocks here. So now we had the right foot forward. This time, the right leg goes back, goes back, go back. We're coming first into the runner's lunge. So the left foot is forward, heel toe it forward, heel toe it forward. Yes, yes. We're doing it the other way around. It's good for your brain too. You thought I was gonna do it the same way. So hold this pose, just one more breath. Nice. You adjust here the runner's lunge. Really, a whatever you decide is the right stretch here for you. Now, the right block or your right hand comes on the floor or onto the block and then open up to a twist. Turn your nose towards the left side. Unfortunately, this phone is not hot. There you go. Okay. Turn. Maybe you hold on with the left hand to your left thigh. Big breath in, big breath out. Or you have your left arm up and you're looking at your left thumb. Stretch your fingers here. Really reach up. One more breath. Bring your hands down. Frame your front foot. Use the blocks if you have it. Bring the back knee now down to your cushion. And here we go. All right. Now, what did we do at the beginning on the right side? This exactly going back and forth, going back and forth. Lubricate this, this um, ankle too here. Or you're doing it on your fingertips right here. That's it. Nice. We did this for quite some time. You're not holding your breath. Big breath in, big breath out. 
We have another psoas muscle right here, <laughs> connecting the upper body with the lower body. Yes, perfect. And now here comes the chaturanga part. It's a play on the sun salutation. So press your hands into the blocks or into the mat, pick up your foot and go back onto your cushion. Now, if you're doing the sun salutation with the knees off the mat, go for it. So walk your hands a little bit forward, not too far forward, a little bit forward. Now bring your shoulders past your wrist, past your wrist, because there's a push up past your wrist, not over your wrist, past your wrist. Now bend the elbow straight back just a little bit. Do you feel your biceps and triceps kick in? Nice. Now straighten the elbows and push the hips down, but the eyes of the elbows towards each other. Yes, you got it. Nose up. Exhale, you choose. Child's pose, half dog or downward dog, wherever you want to go. So this was a little bit of a different sun salutation. It's always, you know, we're putting the moon into it too. It's not just the sun. So there are lots of ways to have fun with sun salutations. It's a variation. It was a variation. Now, when you're done with your child's pose, join us in downward dog. One more breath in downward dog for all of us. Walk your hands back now, back, back. As you're passing your cushion, push it away. We don't need the cushion anymore. We're gonna do all standing. Stay in your forward fold, exhale here. I wanna stay a little bit longer in this forward fold. If forward folding doesn't work out for you, grab your thighs and stay in an L shape. Maybe this works out better. Now, use your peace fingers here. Grab your big toes, bend your knees. Your torso is on top of your thighs. Bend your elbows, flatten your shoulder blades on the back of your mat, loosen up your neck, and maybe you can even gently. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna come closer to you so you can see. So I'm pulling myself down my torso as I'm flaring out with my elbows. So my upper back is completely straight. My shoulder blades are melted into my upper back and then loosen up the neck here. Gently, yes, move your neck. Gently, no. And my, my knees are super bent here. Some of you can, of course, straighten the knees and see if the hamstrings like that. Two more breaths. This is an intense forward fold, even with the bent knees. One more. With an inhale, just look forward. Don't lose your big toes yet. Exhale here, st start straightening your knees a little bit. And then another inhale walks you slowly up your legs, up your legs, up your legs, up your legs, up your legs. And then you know what to do. Yes, medical Qigong movement, that's it. Nice, perfect. Everybody go back to your, to your mat. So you're at the end of your mat because we're gonna step forward. So here is the pyramid posture. Take your right foot, step it forward. How much? Maybe by three feet, four feet. It doesn't have to be a long distance. Hips are square. All 10 toes are to the front. Yes. Do you see your blocks? You left them somewhere in the front. We're gonna catch them. We're gonna catch them again. So they're still good there in the front. Now, it's really important that you pull the belly in here. I'm gonna to talk tomorrow about the bandhas and that will gain a big meaning for you in your flow. But today just focus on keeping the belly in. Can you focus on that? Engage this squat muscle here, engage the back quad. If you need to bend the knee, of course you're gonna bend the knee, but if you can keep it straight, keep it straight so the squat muscle is really super engaged and then walk your hands down. You can stay above the knee. You can stay below the knee. You can maybe travel further down. If you're already reaching your, your, your blocks, pull them and you can put your hands onto the blocks or your fingertips are down. Now, are you still squeezing your belly in? Look at your toes. Don't look forward. This is too much strain on the neck muscle. Look down at your toes with the gaze more towards your ankle. That's it. Breathe. 
Two more breaths here. One more. On your next inhale, walk your hands up your leg, up your leg, up your leg. Hold on to something if you need to. And then come with your hands to your hips, bend into the front knee, step up, and then lubricate the joints a little bit by moving your medical qigong because we're going right away to the other side how by simply pushing the right foot back all 10 toes forward squeeze the belly in engage the quads maybe bend the micro bend in the front knee not a super bend like a warrior one and then walk your hands down your leg do you still feel your quads engage yes perfect squeezing the belly squeezing the belly if you are reaching the blocks reach the blocks or stay a little higher up squeeze the belly though this is a hinge at the hips nice inhale exhale look at your toes your ankles not forward too much for the neck two more breaths here one more Nice. And then slowly on your next inhale, walk up, walk up, walk up, hold on to a piece of furniture. Always a good thing. And then step together your feet. And I'm going to go back a little bit, do your medical Qigong movement so you don't have any tension in your body left when we go in to our next flow. So here we go. Step forward. Step forward. We're doing the full triangle and the reverse triangle. You stay like this, step forward with your right. I'm gonna send, show you the side view. So you're here. Uh, before I go to the side view, look at your back foot, turn it perpendicular to your front foot. And this is the side view. Look, the distance is only as wide as my mat. So now push the hips, your left hip towards the left side. You can even stay here and just focus on engaging both leg muscles. Do you feel them? You need a little micro bend. Of course, you're going to do the micro bend. Maybe hand to your quad and then try to open up the top shoulder towards the sky. Maybe arm goes up to high five. Spread the fingers. Look up at your thumb or maybe bring the arm over your ear. And if you still have room to glide further down, one more thing, squeeze the belly in in this pose. Squeeze the belly in. Are you still holding the quads tight? Perfect. Big breath in, big breath out. One more. With an inhale, come out of it, come out of it, come out of it. Nice. Hands to your hips. Now you're right here. I'm gonna join you. Peel your right toes off the mat, pivot. Now you're parallel with your feet. So this is, this is the side view here, yes? As wide as your mat. Now look at your toes, turn them out, heels in. I'm gonna give you options here, a lot of options. Camper squat, bend your knees, bend your knees. Maybe hands on your thighs, squeeze the belly in. That's really important here. My toes, look at my toes. I can even peel them off the mat because my weight is in my heels. That's it. Stay here. Some of you have no problem going into a full yoga squat. Go down. What, wherever you are is perfect. Three more breaths wherever you are. Two more. Make it work. One more. And then all of us. Put your fingertips down to the floor or grab your blocks if they're still there. I don't think they're there. But push yourself up, 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 up. Maybe still bend knees or straight. Exhale here. And then with an inhale, inhale, inhale. Walk yourself up, up, up. Parallel your feet first and then come to your medical qigong. Nice. Awesome. All right. Here we go. The other side. So left foot steps forward, not a huge distance. Turn your back foot perpendicular first. And I'm gonna show you the side view, so stay there. So here's the side view. Commit to this hip action. This is the hip action that you need here. Push the right hip back, engage the quads, travel only as far as your body will let you travel with the left hand on the left leg. Focus on opening up the top shoulder towards the sky. 
hand can go up to high five, spread your fingers, reach up towards the sky, or bring your arm over your ear. Maybe you travel a little, even a little further down with your hand on the left leg. Breathe, don't hold your breath. Couple more here, we can do it. And then slowly bring the top arm down and then pull yourself up. Now I'm gonna come back how you were doing this, right? Peel now your toes, oops, this was the left one. Peel your toes off the mat, pivot, and you're back into your uh, parallel feet. Now this will be a straddle pose. So widen your stance a wide, little bit more than you did in the squatting position, a little bit wider as wide as you like actually look at your toes turn them slightly in because we want to trace the knees the knees will go in slightly and then i'm gonna let you pull on the belly first and come down this is a forward fold forward fold maybe you stay in a parallel or maybe you decided to stay at a diagonal position are you keeping the belly in or maybe you're coming down to your fingertips or to your shin bones. Wherever you are, everybody has their own forward fold. So make it your own and come down. Some of you can walk your hands maybe a little bit more in and maybe let go of the neck. Squeeze the belly like you mean it. If you have the room and your knees don't hurt, focus on, uh, focus on pulling your kneecaps up that will engage the quads and it takes you to a little deeper forward fold. Big breath in, big breath out. One more. And then with an inhale, lift your head forward, look forward, maybe to your fingertips or to your shin bones, exhale here. And with an inhale, walk up, walk up, walk up. First, heel toe your feet a little bit closer together so you can step into your medical Qigong in a safe way. I promised you the reverse triangle today. So the reverse triangle, it's a bit different. For that, I want you to really have the blocks ready. Some of you who are familiar with the reverse triangle, you go for it. You go for it. You don't need my... Um, cueing here. I'm going to think like we're doing it the first time or you're a beginner yogi. So step again with your right foot forward. The blocks are in the vicinity. If you're not using the block, maybe you can hold on to a piece of furniture that would go too. So same engagement with the legs if you can or micro bend to the front knee. That makes it actually harder to keep the, keep the quads engaged when you have the micro bend. So if you can, he, pull the kneecaps up that engages the quads now we're coming the same way down you're familiar with this this is your pyramid posture i did not change the feet actually the back foot can be perpendicular but let's try it this way with the pyramid and just play with the upper body now the reverse triangle is turning the torso it's a twist towards the right side. So my right foot is here, I'm turning towards the right side. How? By walking with both blocks towards the right. Engage the quad and just look up. Just look up, that's it. This is quite a bit of a stretch for the upper body. For somebody who is new, it's quite a bit. And then can you bring your hips back? They like to sway to the left, bring the hips back. Nice, maybe the nose up. Some of you can probably put the hand on one or two blocks and bring the right hand to your sacrum. Square your hips here and turn your nose up. Turn your nose up, that's it. Big breath in, big breath out. And then with an inhale, come back down again. Press into your blocks. Remember, we did this at the beginning, right? Move your blocks a little bit forward. We're coming into warrior three again. Bend the knee now, the front knee a little bit. Press into your hands, press into your right foot and lift the leg, the left leg up. Drop the left hip. You cannot overdrop it. 
That's it. You're in warrior three, guys. That's a very advanced pose. But with the blocks, it's doable. Yes, we're carrying the whole weight on this right femur. That's it. But we have a little bit help with our hands. And if you're on the floor, it looks probably something like this. One more breath. And then step both feet together. And then slowly, very slowly, walk your hands up, up, up and move into your medical Qigong movement. So we get the friction out of the body. Friction, fiction, tension, whatever you want to call it. All right, okay, we're doing the same thing again. So have your blocks mid, mid um, the mat. So we can step up with the left foot, step forward, like in your pyramid posture, all 10 toes forward, the hips are right here, yep. So engagement of the quads, you got it now. If you need to bend it, you need to bend the knee. That is, there's nothing you can do, but if you can keep it straight, keep the kneecap up, both kneecaps. You're coming down, belly in, belly in, and then you're finding your left twist. Look what my hips do. They sway to the right, right away. Bring them back, bring them back. It's a pull. The twisting is happening just on the torso, not on the pelvis. You keep it straight, that's it. And then maybe turn your nose slightly to the side. Now, for some of you, it'll be easy, maybe easy enough to put two blocks underneath your right hand and bring your left hand to your sacrum. And that gives you a little bit more freedom to twist your torso and maybe move your nose up towards the sky or you're with one hand down or no blocks. That's it. One more breath. And then on your next inhale, turn your torso back, center, press onto your blocks. You know where I'm going with this. Exhale here. Move your hands a little bit forward. Adjust your foot, bend the front knee, and take off. Yes, there's a whole series with this as the rising of the phoenix. I will do this towards the latter part of my practicum with you when we have at least 10 to 12 classes under our belt. Those are more, a little bit more advanced standing poses or balancing poses. And then step your feet together and fold. Guess what? We're gonna take a connection now. The, the real connection, which is the vinyasa, meaning a chaturanga. So from this forward fold, look how bent my knees are. You're gonna come with the long torso out of it. Let me show you from the side. So maybe hands to your, to your shin bones or to your, to your um, quads. So keep the belly in and then maybe arms out wide, come up to a mountain pose, long torso. Now reach up if you can. If you can't keep your hands at heart center, reach up, interlace your fingers, flip your palms, and then take a side stretch to either, it doesn't matter which side, come back center. And you can do this side stretch here like this too, or like this in front of you. And to the other side, that's it. And now, in order for us to do the sun salutation, maybe bring the cushion back for your knees, yes? So hands to your lower back. We have done 11 of them. You know what to do here. Push your hands into your lower back, push your hips forward, maybe nose up, inhale here. Stay for the exhale. Second inhale. Exhale, bend your knees, travel with your hands down, maybe target your cushion or no cushion if you decide. Walk your hands, spread your fingers, walk your hands forward, forward, forward. Now come the shoulders, what? Stop at the wrist, nope. Pass the wrist because we have a push-up position. Bend the elbow straight back. Look how it stays so close to my torso. Look forward, don't look back here. Look forward, you don't have to go to this. You can stay right here. Do you feel your triceps? Yes, you do. And then with an inhale, straighten the elbows, turn the eyes of the elbows towards each other, nose up. If you love downward dog, go into your downward dog. If you don't care about the downward dog, push yourself into child's pose. If that's not doable, stay in tabletop and push the hips back. So many options. Just listen to your body and breathe. Don't hold your breath. 
All right. For those of you, let me show you first the downward dog people. If you're in downward dog, this is one way to come down. You bring one knee down, you bring the other one knee down, and then you can come to this position. Well, if you don't want to do that and you want to do little jumping, you can do this too and jump. For those of us who are on the mat, come out of your child's pose. And guess what? Sit to one side and make it really easy on yourself and shake out the body. Good job. So this is more a traditional, little simplified vinyasa flow that you would hit in a normal yoga studio. Power vinyasa, maybe for those who've been sitting all day in their chair and they want to really sweat, which is great too. Or for us who are able uh, to do this during the daytime, um, maybe a little more gentler flow where you can hone in on the breath too. I promise you, once you understand the cues and the names of the poses, you don't even look at the teacher anymore because it becomes a moving meditation for you. All right, so much talk, shake out. Now, this is a very traditional seated pose. So this looks like a tree pose. Yes, yes, yes. We have only done so far one tree standing, but this is the seated version. But I don't want this left like loosey goosey. This is my right side. Again, engage. Put the sole of your foot wherever it lands is the right spot. So now turn your torso towards the left leg and walk your hands forward. Do not round the head down. No, we want the chest down towards the knee. Does it have to reach it? Of course not. Hands on the floor, hands on the shin bone. Maybe you grab the side of your feet. Some of you are more open with your hamstrings. You can maybe make a right fist and grab the um, right wrist here with the left hand and look at your toes. Unless, of course, you're so close that your nose is down to the knee, then you can't look at your toes. And breathe. One more thing. Pull the belly in. Pull the belly in. Those are the one, most important things in yoga. We call them bandhas. I'm going to introduce you to them tomorrow. Pull the belly in. One, no, two more breaths here. We don't want to shorten this. One more. And then slowly with an inhale, come out of it. All right, stay with me here. Bring the knee up. Yes, bring the knee up. So we're going to do one more thing here. So this is the right, right? Separate, separate the foot from your inner thigh. So you have a little bit more room. Look, it's in line with my hip. Yep. So here we go. Now put the right shoulder in. Put the right shoulder in and and reach for your shin bone, reach for your, and with my left hand, I'm supporting myself. Reach forward, reach forward and pull your torso forward. That's it. Pull your torso forward. Nice. Perfect. One more breath. And then slowly come out of it. Okay, play time. So the leg is right in front of you. It's still the same position, nothing changed. So here you can, it, Actually, I want you to bring the toes forward, 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 about the, this, the, the height of your knee, yeah? So now bring the right arm back in, the right shoulder. Great. So I'm going to move a little bit so you can see. Look at my left hand. I'm going to lean onto my left hand. This is, again, bone tempering as it's best. Spread your fingers. By the hips, it's too far away for me to really lean. Maybe a little bit more forward and a little bit more to the side. Now, I'm gonna take my right hand right underneath my calf muscle or, or actually knee, knee. Press into your right foot, press into your left foot. Lift the hips. Yes, you can do it. Yes, yes, I can see it, how you're smiling. All right, and then relax and get chill wiper your knees from side to side. Perfect, thank you for humoring me. That was the baby grasshopper, if you're wondering what I was doing there. Baby grasshopper. No, actually, it's not the baby grasshopper. It's the senior grasshopper. I will introduce you to the baby grasshopper too. So this is my senior grasshopper. All right, the other side. The right leg stays straight. 
with the ankle completely engaged and then you bring the left side into your tree version yes this is the seated tree okay turn your torso towards the straight leg engage the quad muscles if there should hopefully no pain so really pull the kneecap up and then come down how far you decide remember don't round the head down you're doing the chest heart center to the knee and maybe you can grab the sides of your feet because you're pulling the toes towards you and that's maybe doable or you're making a left fist and grabbing with the right hand and that is a bigger pull of course on the shoulders on the hamstring maybe on your nose you feel it somewhere you feel it somewhere else but look at your toes unless your nose is touching your knee not by rounding your head down but because you're so close on this side i can't touch my knee it's so different right and left for me couple more breaths one more And then slowly, 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 slowly come out of it. If you need to wiggle here, wiggle, of course. Bring the left knee up. Push the, pull the heel in as much as you can and push the foot out so it's in line with your hip here. Not so far out, but in line with your outer hip here. Nice. So bring the left shoulder in. My right hand is here on the floor. This right leg is flexed and I'm reaching forward. Just reach forward. Just reach forward. Keep the belly in. Yep, that's it. All right. Big breath in. Big breath out. Nice. Inhale. Exhale. One more. All right. Here's our senior grasshopper. Come slowly out of it. Now, this left foot, heel toe it forward to the height of your knee somewhere. Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore what the distance is here really. Then bring the left shoulder back in. The right hand, remember the right hand, how we need to have, find a spot that supports us, find that spot. And then the left foot is important because we're gonna press into the left foot and the right hand. But this left hand is gonna lift the right leg up. So press. Press hard into the floor and lift. Yes, yes, you're smiling again. Breathe and then touch down. And of course, you know what to do. Perfect. All right. Really quickly come down to your back so we can reset this whole thing with a bridge. A bridge is the best way to reset your, your spine. Pull the heels in if you like. And let me turn my feet so you can see or maybe they're further away but what I do usually is I turn my toes slightly out not a first with first position just turn out but slightly now your hands are by your side remember peel your toes off the mat to dig into your heels and lift 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 lift, lift up maybe interlace your hands underneath your torso by wiggling your shoulder blades together Perfect, now come to your neck. Is, does your neck feel comfortable? Push your nose up. We don't want any, any crunching there in the neck area, in the cervical spine. Stay with me here. I have not counted the breath today yet. I'm gonna do six inhales and seven exhales. Three more time. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six, Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, one, two more. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, two, one more. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, three. And now slowly bring your hips down slowly gently touch down bring your knees into your chest rock a little bit from side to side start rolling your knees here of course one way first and this is really my to go thing and then the other way perfect all right and then just to loosen everything up everything up 
up towards the sky. Nice, perfect. Now bring your feet down so we can do a quick, um, quick twisting here. Maybe separate your feet as wide as your shoulders and then let both knees go one side. Let both knees go one side. So feet separate, parallel as wide as your shoulders and then both knees go to one side and maybe you turn your nose towards the other side and I move into the picture so you can see what I'm doing with my, yeah. You can extend your arms and turn your nose towards the right thumb. One more breath. And then bring the knees back to center, adjust your feet and take both knees towards the other side and turn your nose to the left side. Guess what? As you're breathing, you're pulling the belly in. Yeah, that's your intro to the bandhas. I will explain the bandhas tomorrow before we start the practice. It's really a thing for me, very important to protect the lower back area and the bandhas do a great job. And then with an inhale, come back center, hug your knees again in. You can round, of course, your tail up, rock from side to side, and then shake it out one more time because I am going to skip the Shavasana, traditional Shavasana. I'm gonna bring you up right away. So come to your side, come to your side. Stay in this fiddle position, maybe one more breath. And then press yourself up, maybe with a soft gaze. Don't get dizzy here doing yoga with me. And then sit however you like. Some of you may enjoy half lotus. Maybe that's doable, maybe it's not doable. You have your feet out in this easy pose. Or some of you may go into the full lotus. Whichever you like, that's what you need to do. All right. Here we go. One minute meditation. <laughs> Remember the sa ta na ma sa ta na ma. If you haven't done it with me, please go back to the first two videos or the first video actually. So the thumb it touches the ring, the this index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky finger. So hands on top of your knees or thighs, and close your eyes. I will watch the time. If you like, repeat with me. If you don't care, just touch with your thumbs the fingertips of your other fingers and close your eyes or keep your soft gaze. Sit upright. Here we go. Sa ta na ma 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 sa ta na Last time, ta na ma, and then turn your hands down on top of your thighs, and let this wash over you, your true essence. Maybe revisit with your intention one more time, and feel the feeling around it. Yogi. Us yogis, we're more in tune with our bodies, with our, with our breath, with our feelings. The subtleties of a yoga practice. Bring your hands into heart center. Let's take a group breath to finish up the class. Take a big inhale in, in hold it for three counts and sigh it out loud. The big breath has a count of six. So here I go with counting it. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Hold your breath, two, three, sigh it out loud. <sighs> if you like, 
join me in reciting the end of the class, maybe bring your thumb knuckles to your forehead center. Loka, Loka, Samasta, Samasta, Sukino, Sukino, Bhavantu, Bhavantu. May all living beings everywhere be happy and free. Namaste. Thank you, yogis, for joining this fourth class. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow.